We all know creatine is one of the most effective supplements for boosting athletic performance and strength. The science behind that claim is solid. But what about the other less talked about claims, like improving brain function, lifting mood, or even helping with weight loss? Let's take a closer look at what the research actually shows. Creatine is often marketed as a brain booster, but the evidence just doesn't hold up for most people. For instance, studies in healthy young adults show that taking between 5 and 20 grams a day for 6 weeks doesn't improve thinking or memory. That said, some reviews of studies in older or less healthy groups suggest there may be a very small benefit, mainly in short-term memory. The effect seems stronger in people who don't eat much meat like vegetarians or in those those who are older, stressed, or otherwise not at peak health. Still, the benefits are minor and don't seem to extend beyond memory. By the way, I review a lot of supplements here, so subscribe and hit the bell to stay updated. And support me on coffee if you enjoy the content. When it comes to people with more serious cognitive issues, the results are even less encouraging. Research in age-related cognitive decline shows no improvement compared to placebo. The same goes for patients with Parkinson's disease, even when creatine was taken for up to 18 months and for people with schizophrenia, where no benefit to cognitive function or symptoms was seen. So in short, creatine doesn't appear to improve brain function for most healthy people. At best, certain groups like vegetarians or older adults may see a slight bump in memory, but if the cognitive problems become more pronounced, creatine also doesn't seem to help. Another common claim is that creatine can help with depression. Here, the evidence is weak. One small study found that 5 grams a day for 8 weeks slightly boosted the effect of the antidepressant escitalopram, but only in women and only as an add-on, not as a standalone treatment. Major expert groups including the World Federation of Societies of Biological Psychiatry and the Canadian Network for Mood and Anxiety Treatments actually recommend against using creatine for depression. Right now, there's no good evidence it works on its own as an antidepressant. Finally, what about weight loss? This is another myth. Creatine doesn't directly burn fat or mount to weight pounds. At most, if it helps you push harder in the gym, you might burn more calories over time. But the creatine itself isn't causing fat loss. In fact, creatine is better known for increasing weight, usually in a good way by adding lean muscle mass. For people hoping to burn fat by taking it, that's just not how it works. Creatine is most often used as a workout supplement, but it's actually something your body already makes and stores, mostly in your muscles. You can also get it from food, especially red meat and fish. Since creatine is found almost entirely in animal products, vegetarians and vegans don't get much of it through their diets and instead rely mostly on what their bodies can naturally produce. Because of this, their muscle creatine levels are usually a little lower than those of meat eaters. That's one reason creatine supplements can have an even bigger impact on exercise for people on plant-based diets. The boost feels stronger because they're starting from a lower baseline. This is because creatine acts as your body's backup battery for energy. Your cells run on ATP, the fuel that powers every movement. During short bursts of intense effort like sprinting, jumping, or lifting heavy weights, ATP runs out quickly. That's where creatine steps in, instantly recharging your energy supply so you can keep going. This is why athletes and gym goers use it. Keeping your muscles topped up with creatine can help you train harder, recover faster, and squeeze more out of every workout. If you want to saturate your muscles quickly, one common method is a loading phase, about 20 grams a day split into a few doses for 5 to 7 days, followed by a maintenance dose of 3 to 5 grams daily. This fills your muscles faster. Alternatively, you can skip the loading phase and just take 3 grams a day. It works just as well, it just takes a little longer to get to full saturation. The most effective way to take creatine is as a powder dissolved in a liquid. Pills, lozenges, or undissolved powder don't absorb as well. Another simple trick, take it with carbohydrates. The insulin response helps your muscles pull in more creatine. 
As for timing, some small studies suggest taking creatine right after exercise might give a slight edge in strength and muscle gains, but bigger reviews show that taking it before or after your workout doesn't make much difference in the long run. The important thing is just taking it consistently. There's often debate about which type of creatine is the best, but the answer is pretty simple. Go with creatine monohydrate. This form has been studied more than any other. It's the most effective at raising muscle creatine levels, and it's usually the cheapest option too. Other versions exist, but the research on them is far more limited. Take dicreatine citrate, for example. It dissolves better in water than creatine monohydrate, but that doesn't mean your body absorbs it any better. In fact, once mixed into liquid, many of these alternative forms convert into plain creatine monohydrate anyways. Creatine nitrate has also been promoted as superior, with marketing claims suggesting it produces higher muscle concentrations than monohydrate. But clinical studies don't support this. Both forms perform essentially the same. At the end of the day, no matter what form you take, your body processes it as creatine, and it behaves the same in your bloodstream. One of the most common fears about creatine is that it causes hair loss. This comes from a single study suggesting that creatine might spike levels of DHT, a hormone linked to male pattern baldness. Because DHT can shrink hair follicles in genetically susceptible men, the idea spread quickly that creatine might speed up balding. But that finding hasn't really been replicated. Most studies show no meaningful rise in testosterone or DHT when people take creatine, and even when there is a small bump, levels stay within the normal range. In fact, a study published in 2025 found no change in DHT and no impact on hair health in men taking creatine. It's also worth noting that the original DHT spike study used a very high loading dose, 25 grams per day, plus carbs to enhance absorption. That's far above what most people take. Importantly, no controlled trial has ever observed actual hair loss caused by creatine. The scattered reports of thinning hair are anecdotal at best. So under normal dosing, creatine doesn't appear to cause hair loss in any meaningful way. If you're concerned, stick to moderate daily doses and skip extreme loading phases. Creatine is one of the better researched and more reliable supplements for improving strength and exercise performance. But don't count on it to sharpen your brain, lift your mood, or melt fat. The best option is plain creatine monohydrate mixed into water, juice, or your smoothie. Timing isn't critical. Before or after your workout both work fine. And no, creatine is not likely to make you lose your hair as long as you take it reasonably. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to share them in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you know someone who could benefit from this, please share it with them. Finally, if you enjoy what we do and want to learn more, consider supporting us on Coffee, and be sure to check out our other socials as well.